Hello, welcome to today's edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, we're doing a review of the Gunskins new Pistol Accent Kit. So Gunskins has just released a new product. It's called the Pistol Accent Kit. And what you do with that kit is you cover the slide and the grip panels and the base of your magazines with it. So you're not coating the whole gun. It's kind of just like an accent, like the name says. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the application of the Gunskins Pistol Accent Kit. We're going to do it to a Glock 22 Gen 4. And we've chosen the Glock for the reason that they have Glock kits, SIG P226 kits, and 1911 kits. So in a way it sounds like it's limiting, but it's not. Because they say the Glock kit is just about a universal kit. So our intention is, is to try all these kits out. They're fairly inexpensive at $20 each. And we're going to do the Glock first, and in later videos that we'll show later in the year, uh, we'll do the P226 and a 1911, and possibly get another Glock kit and try it on a gun that's neither of those, and see how universal it really is. First things first, you have to degrease the gun. And this is so the vinyl uh, sticker that a gun skin essentially is sticks to the gun properly and doesn't come off. Now they recommend you use a degreaser like Frog Lube or some type of dechlorinated brake cleaner. Um, you could really, the choices are up to you. The important thing is, is that the gun is grease free. Okay, we've gone ahead and got our uh, uh, brake cleaner here. We're going to go ahead and spray the pistol down. Okay, using our AP brush, we're going to just brush. Get in all those nooks and can crannies, especially right back here where you grip the slide. Get the slide, get the top, and around the nooks and crannies of the barrel. Slide. Get into the grip here where you're going to be placing part of the accents. And we're just trying to get all that grease that's naturally on our hands out of there. Once we've done that, we're going to wipe it down with a lint free cloth. All right, now that we've got that wiped down, we're just going to give the gun time to dry off, and then we'll move on to the next steps. When you open the Gunskins Pistol Accent Kit, this is what you find. You find decals to go ahead and accent your pistol, and you have a slide section, you have a frame section, which is basically the grip panels, and then you have a magazine section, which is basically the base plate of your magazines. You get enough in this kit to do one slide, one frame, and six magazines. Now, uh, Gunskins is saying that the uh, Glock kit is pretty much the universal kit, but we're doing a little comparison here, and like all things universal, it's one size fits most. On the left-hand side, you've got a Glock 22 Gen 4, and obviously there is more than enough material to do the slide. Uh, what you have on the right is a Glock 41 45 ACP, and if you tried to do the slide with this, you'd come up about a quarter of an inch short. So that may not bother you, but that is just something to be aware of. Uh, the 34, 35, 41 length slides, there's not quite enough material in this accent kit to cover those. When you start off a Gunskins project of any type, be it rifle, pistol, shotgun, magazines, whatever, what you want to start off with is having a good, nice, sharp hobby knife. In this case, I'm using an X-Acto. But start off with a new blade. Uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier. I don't know the exact chemical comp uh, composition of these decals, but I can say after doing a few Gunskins projects, of which you can check out links in the uh, description below, that these things will dull blades like nobody's business. So it's good to have a good uh, hobby knife, and it's also good to have a good supply of blades for it along. Now moving along, we're going to start off uh, doing the slide first. Just kind of press it in real good there. Next part, as we come around, 
we're going to start to encounter the sights. And what we're going to need to do is, once we figure out where those are, is make some relief cuts. What I'm doing is just pressing around the slide just so I can find out where it's at. Make that relief cut. And just keep working it right around. Apply a little heat, make the material a little more pliable. that piece out of the way. What I did is just cut around the front sight post there and I'm gonna kind of overdid it a little bit so I'm gonna have to do a little patch there but it's no big deal. Patching these things are easy as you can see. They're giving you a lot of extra material to work with here. So we've cut around the sight. Now in each of these cases I got a little over rambunctious with my cutting. But these things happen. And then you just keep wrapping the material around the slide, pressing it into place as you go. Make sure you get that detail where the slide serrations are. And press it in. Right around here where the barrel and the injection port are, you're going to trim that away. So if that gets a little wrinkly, life's not going to end. All right. So there we go, and we're going to trim off the excess now. Now we're going to clean up around the muzzle end of the pistol. And I've been saving these little scraps, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Just round that out, like so. Press that in. And so far, looking pretty good. Except you'll notice right here, got a little chunk that I got a little over aggressive with. So I'm going to find a little piece that's going to, yeah, there we go, fit in that area, cut it with my blade, and trim a little more with my blade, and just put that right in there against that. It'll blend in just perfect. Use my little gunskins tool here. And voila, it's already blended in. And voila, as you can see, it's already blended in. That's where the mistake was. That's where I put the patch, and it was able to blend in pretty decently. Now we're going to move on here to the back of the pistol. And one of the first things we're going to do about is, remember how I said change the blades a lot? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do that because while this portion of the blade is still good, the tip's already worn out. And you can see I was struggling a little earlier in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this blade and get a good one on there so I can continue on with what I'm doing. Okay, new blade and we're back in action. All right. Now... Almost I can't tell, but right there, I got a little too aggressive with my cutting, so I'm going to do another one of the patches. And I've been saving scraps all along, and this is why you save scraps. So you can fix your little minor mistakes. So I'm going to lay this in here. Got one with a nice straight edge. 
That uh, looks pretty good. Press it down in place and go ahead and trim off the excess. Now, as you can see on the slide, now we've got to do the ejection port. And this is where having a good tip makes a lot of sense. By pressing in the gun skin and forming out the perimeter of the barrel, it gives you a built-in template to work with. And voila! Ejection port is clear. And while we're at it, we'll just give a quick function check. Yep, okay, so we've got no uh, gun skin in the way of any part that interferes, that affects the operation of the pistol. Now, we're going to go ahead and add some heat. And we're going to use this foam pad right here to press down on the gun for two things. We're going to try to bring out the serrations, the gripping serrations, and on this side of the Glock pistol, you'll have the name Glock 22 Gen 4 Austria, and we're going to see how much we can get that to come out. You can kind of already see, not sure how it's sewing up on the film, it's coming through the sticker as is. A little heat is going to help that out. Heat also helps the gun to bond, uh, the sticker to bond to the gun, but be careful, don't overdo your heat. Gun Skins has this great little squeegee tool. Use that to get in your little nooks and crannies. And sometimes it takes a couple applications of heat to get in there. And there you go, you got definite definition now. The heat uh, helped the uh, engravings come through a little bit more, but there's only so much you can get on the fine print. On the top, we'll give a little bit of heat, help blend in and help bond the uh, gun skin to the pistol, help cover up our patch. And just like we had to bring out the slide serrations on the other side, we've got to do the same on this side. So apply some heat, apply some pressure. Use the squeegee to press in and help define these slide serrations. serial number on the slide, see if we can get that to come out. Not that it really matters, I know it's serial numbers on the uh, frame, but hey, if we can get the anything you can get to come through, it helps out. So, there, we've done the slide. Now we move on to the grip panels. So, right side of the gun, right side grip panel, let's get start there. Just line these up wherever you want. Try out in a couple different places. There, I'm going to go right there. It's right below the magazine catch, as you can see right there, so it saves me a little bit of trimming. I just press in, and even without the heat, as just pressing in, you can see the stippling coming through the gun skin. So let's give it a blast of heat. Nice and warm. Press it in, and there you have it. Wow, it really comes in. You can almost read the patent number down here, and that came out beautiful. Give it another press just to see if we can't get a little more detail. All right, well, obviously, the next thing we do flip the gun over and do the other side. Nice thing about these gun skin, uh, they're tacky, but not overly so. So if you make a slight error in getting it to lay down, you can just peel it right back up and put it down. And here, I followed the same pattern I did on the other side of putting it below my magazine release button so I don't have to trim any of the panel. And wow, you can really see how that came out this time. Matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on that. There we are, the Glock label even came through spectacularly. 
the stippling patterns really come through. You can feel no difference in texture between this section uncovered and this section that is covered. Now we still have one part left to go and that's the magazine base pad. So we're going to go ahead and do those next. The last part of the pistol accent kit is the magazine and they give you the ability to do six magazine base plates. So that's what we're going to do. We have a mixture of magazines here. We have three Glock magazines and we have three Magpul magazines. And the first question I know you're going to ask is, hey, you just did a Glock 22 and 40 caliber. Why do you have Magpul magazines there? No, Magpul has not come out with 40 cal magazines for Glocks yet, unfortunately. What I do have is 9mm Glock magazines, and the reason I'm doing uh, the 9mm Magpul magazines with these base plates is I run conversion barrels a lot of times in my Glock 40s of various sizes. Uh, logistics makes that the smart thing to do because 9mm is very cheap right now, and uh, you got plenty of parts and magazines for 9mm are cheap. The ammo is cheap. You can't argue with it. So if you're not running a conversion barrel on your 40 caliber Glocks, you should really consider it. All right, so we've gone and degreased all our mag uh, bases here so that the gun skin has a chance to adhere properly. And we're just going to go ahead and apply them. We're going to start off with a Glock mag because that's what it's designed for. And even just pressing in by hand, as you can see right there, the Glock label is starting to come out right off the bat, which is a nice sign. Let's give it a blast of heat. Use foam padding to push it down like they recommend in the Gunskins installation videos. And yeah, when you press it down, the Glock logo really does come out. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty defined as it comes out. Now one thing compared to your Glock magazine that's uncovered is your base page release. That is covered up, so that will have to be trimmed up at a later time. So, moving on, let's go ahead and do a Magpul mag and see what happens. One thing noticed right off the edge, I lined it up off the back using the straight edge on the back, and that left a little bit of a gap up here at the front. Lesson learned. Next one I do, I'm, I'll try dressing off the front and see if that makes a difference. Okay. So, as with the uh, Glock mag, as you can see here, back to another one, the disassembly notch is covered up, so that will have to be trimmed out later. Also, the marking grid for numbering your magazines gets covered up, but obviously if you're putting the Gunskins mag cover over your mag, you're probably not that concerned about numbering them. Now, as we said earlier in the video, this time I'm going to dress off the front ridges of the mag to see if that makes any difference in how it looks. And got a little bit of air bubble, so a little puncture there. And away the air bubble goes. And basically we have the same results that we had with the first Magpul mag we did, which was the numbering grid doesn't come out that uh, clear, but like I said, we're not really numbering these anyways. I think for the final Magpul mag, I'll line it up off the rear again. And onto our final mag here, another Magpul mag. Like with our first Magpul mag, we're going to uh, uh, line up the sticker on the rear of the mag. So you have a straight edge line along the uh, rear there, and we're just going to put it right there. Pull it up, make sure we got our left to right just right as well. Now we're going to go ahead and trim up uh, the holes so we can uh, disassemble these magazines. And there you have it. Six magazines with the uh, base plate camo installed. Three Magpul, three Glock, each with the cutouts done for the disassembly parts. Uh, that's an optional thing. It depends on your policy of cleaning the mags. You can leave it on there or cut it out. I chose to cut it out for the experience. Going forth, I would probably just not worry about it on my Glock magazines and on my Magpul magazines. I would pretty much remove the base plates first. Uh, it will be a whole lot easier to cut them out, remove, than it, are, than it is with them attached to the mag. So there you go. Lesson learned. Hopefully it saves you some pain in the future. And there you have it. One completed Glock pistol accent kit from Gunskins in Military OCP. 
Just to show how well the gun skins blends in, this is a Glock 22 I had hydro dipped years ago. I have just installed one of the magazines that we did in this video, and as you can see, it blends in perfectly. We hope you found this review of the gun skins pistol accent kit helpful and informative. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and tune in for future camouflage test videos.